To a whole generation of listeners, the name Atlantic means jazz. Atlantic Records was founded in 1948 by the Turkish ambassador's son, Ahmet Erdogan, and his friend Herb Abramson, an A&R man for National Records, with a loan by Ahmet's family dentist. Ahmet and his brother Nesui had, over time, collected around 15,000 jazz and blues records. The label struggled at first, and it took 22 unsuccessful records before they got a hit with Stick McGee's Drinkin' Wine Speedy O.D. in 1949. The rest is history. In 1955, Ahmet persuaded his brother Nesui to join the label. He signed John Coltrane, Charles Mingus, and Ornette Coleman, and went on to release some of the most groundbreaking albums in jazz history. It was at Atlantic Records that John Coltrane built his reputation once and for all. Arriving in 1959, fresh from the Miles Davis kind of blues sessions, he cut enough material in two years for eight albums, leading to classics like Giant Steps, Ole Coltrane, and My Favorite Things, whose title track became a radio hit, as well as a perfect collaboration with vibraphonist Milt Jackson. It was during his time with the label that he began to focus more on the melody-driven influence of the avant-garde jazz of the time, inspired by the music of label mate Ornette Coleman. Texas-born saxophonist Ornette Coleman turned the jazz world on its ear when he arrived in New York City in 1959. Pianist John Lewis from the Modern Jazz Quartet was so impressed with Coleman's new approach that he immediately secured him a recording contract with Atlantic through Nessoe Erdogan. His alto playing, unbound by chord changes, relied on melodic improvisation, a style and philosophy he called harmelodics. Fueled by the power of the blues and multi-rhythms, defining the shape of jazz to come. The Modern Jazz Quartet signed to Atlantic Records in 1956 for an association that would last their lifetimes. With their cool improvisations on blues and classical chamber music, they bridged the gap between smoky jazz clubs and prestigious concert halls. Their early arrangements proved so intricate that shortly after joining the group, bassist Percy Heath studied under the bass titan Charles Mingus to improve his intonation. It was with Atlantic Records that Charles Mingus, the greatest bass player jazz has ever known, finally set into motion a career that would lead him to international fame and create a musical identity that set him apart from his peers. His compositions took inspiration from jazz's New Orleans origins, the blues and the church, to advance not only musical expression, but also political and spiritual ideas. Ray Charles' fusion of gospel, jazz, and blues changed the face of popular music. From 1952, when he signed to Atlantic Records, he was soon riding high in the charts with a string of rhythm and blues singles. But he used full-length albums to explore modern jazz, like The Great Ray Charles, Soul Brothers, and The Genius of Ray Charles. With this, he clearly made a statement, I can play jazz too. <laughs> 